Hello everyone, what is up? I had a very busy day today. Woke up super early, I had a two hour long magic lesson. Uh, I wasn't getting magic lessons, I was, I was giving magic lessons to one of my awesome new students here. I'm very happy about that. I also got to hang out at the magic shop here in Tampa and meet some of the local magicians. One of them happened to be a friend of mine from my days back in Queens when I managed the Rogue Magic Shop, which was pretty cool. Anyway, today I'm a little short on time, so I wanted to share with you sort of a story time video, and that is how I got started in magic, or I think let's do a catchy title, how I became a magician. Everyone has their story of their first magic trick or the first thing that got them interested in the art of magic. Most people, when they're really young, they get like a magic kit for their birthday or for a holiday, and that jump starts the magic bug, so to speak, inside of them. For me, it was a little bit different. I grew up loving music. I'm a musician. I've been playing drums since I was 11 years old. I was 11 when I got my first drum set on Christmas. And I played in touring bands. I recorded two full-length CDs with two separate bands. And it was a fun time. I did a little bit of touring here and there. But uh, I was always stuck sort of behind the kit. And even since I was little, I was always a natural performer. I always wanted to be in front of an audience, hence you guys and my YouTube community here. Playing drums was good. It, it sort of it fulfilled that need, but not in all the ways that I had wanted it to. I don't, was always searching for something more. So I did a lot of like Broadway in school, Broadway. I did a lot of stage acting in middle school, a little bit in high school. But then uh, I think that was the year 2006. Yeah, 2006. I was in the city with a bunch of buddies of mine and we stumbled across Lincoln Center. And for those of you who know about magic, know that in 2006, that is when David Blaine was doing his Drowned Alive stunt. I'll put a photo of that right here. So that was his big stunt he was doing in Lincoln Center where he was encompassed in a globe of water. And it was a really cool endurance feat. But when I was there, I noticed a bunch of local magicians doing really intricate close-up magic. And it was a group of like five or six guys and they were all traveling together doing this, this close-up magic thing. So I was intrigued. I went up, I started watching what they were doing. And when I saw them manipulating the cards, the money, the coins, right up close without camera or a television special or anything like that or on a YouTube video because YouTube magic was like a thing way back in 2006. It really intrigued me. I, I basically was like, I need to be doing this. This is what I need to do. I ended up chatting up with the like leader of the group or the one that was facilitating all of the things. His name was Rogue, Roger Kwan. Roger Rogue Kwan. You probably know him, he's been seen on America's Got Talent a few times, but he also used to manage a magic shop, which was also the subject of the documentary, uh, Misdirection, The Magicians. I don't remember, uh, I'll put a link to it right here. The documentary was filmed when I was a member of the shop and it went through a bunch of different name changes, but I know the rapper and actor Common was one of the producers of it. Anyway, I digress. Hung out with Rogue, found out that he owned a magic shop right near, well not right near, but pretty close to where I lived. So every day after school, I would just take the bus and take it 30 minutes to this little tiny magic shop in Queens, New York. And for the first like six months, uh, I would take lessons. I bought a lot of books, a lot of gimmick tricks, basically anything I can get my hands on. And as I started hanging out there, I had a few mentors, people who would teach me things, and I'll mention them later on in this video. And once I was able to like demonstrate the tricks, I basically had like a little bit of a natural ability to be able to sell. One of my first jobs was selling computers when I was younger, and I basically took all those principles of selling computers and upselling accessories, and I applied that to magic. So instead of selling one or two tricks, I would combine a routine with four or five different tricks and I would just sell that as a package. And it worked really well for the years that I became a part of this shop. Um, I did get a little bit ahead of myself. Um, I didn't mention, after about six or seven months, I actually got a job selling magic at this magic shop. And after about another six months of being a demonstrator and a salesman, uh, Rogue made me the manager of the shop. 
and I was there a full five days a week. I was managing all the inventory, coming in, uh, bringing in new products, figuring out what new products to get from the catalogs. Um, I would help produce the shows that we would do every Saturday night. And um, at this point, I was never really performing on stage. I was just demonstrating and doing close-up magic to friends and family and anyone who would watch at my school. Uh, which is important to know that I was not performing at this point. After I would say a year of managing the shop, um, we were producing a show, it was a Saturday night, and the opening act uh, called out. He got sick, he wasn't able to make it. And at this point I was really heavy into mentalism and mind reading, that stuff really intrigued me. And I had the Stealth Assassin wallet by uh, Alakazam Magic, or UK Alakazam, whatever their company is called. But basically it's a little wallet that allows you to do 45 minutes to an hour worth of material, straight material, which is really incredible. I still have mine till this very day. I'll see if I can find it in a, I think it's in my close-up, my close-up case, but that's another video. Anyway, uh, our entertainer called out. We didn't know what to do. We did not have anyone to substitute in. And Rogue was like, well, you have your assassin wallet, right? I was like, yeah. He goes, all right, so stop being a bitch and go on and perform. And I was terrified because I had never performed before. This was the first time I would ever get on stage in front of a large group and do magic that wasn't close-up magic. And oh my goodness, I was so nervous. Pleased to say though that that performance was amazing. I, I thought that I was going to crash and burn, but uh, some of my mentors, including Xavier Spade, was pretty like pretty enamored with the mentalism act that I did. It was dark, it was a little edgy, um, there was not a lot of humor in it, which is a little different for me because I do have a lot of humor in my act now. Uh, but it was something that I really enjoyed doing, and from that moment on, every week I was performing. Whether I was doing a little bit of close-up magic here or there, or getting a spot on the list to do the show, I just kept performing. I couldn't stop. I was taking any show that I could get, and uh, eventually I started doing kids birthday parties, which is a big thing in the magic community, especially for someone who's just starting off. It's where you can learn and develop a lot of your skills because children are brutally honest. If they see something they like, they will tell you. If they see something they don't like, they will shout it at you. And a lot of people have different opinions about doing, you know, family style magic shows and things like that. Some people love it and they make a very good living off of it. For me, it was good for developing my skills, and I still do a family show here or there, but only if it's someone who I'm like really close with or if it was by a referral, never just like a, a cold lead. It always has to be like a referral sort of thing, um, but that's just my own personal, uh, my personal preference. Anyway, so I did that for close to two years on and off while I was working at the shop. I would work a few days at the shop, and then I would take a few days off to perform and to go out and do these shows on the weekends. It was a really good system I had until um, I was actually, it was a good problem, I was overbooked. So I was, I was getting booked for more shows than I could handle. So I ended up uh, giving up a few of my days at the magic shop to some of my friends. Um, it was a really tight community back then. We all sort of shared shifts um, when it came to working the shop. But yeah, I started doing shows more frequently. It basically became my full-time gig. Pretty much from age like 17, no I'm sorry from age like 19 to now has been a thing. I just get to perform and do magic. I've had some odd jobs here and there. Some of you who know me know I worked at T-Mobile. I was a manager there for some time. And that's honestly just because, you know, living expenses in New York are, are very high. Um, I'm fortunate enough now to where I can try and make a full-time career out of magic, whether that means designing magic websites, which I've done, consulting, I consult for a lot of magicians, which is, you know, it's a fun thing to do. I don't do it for, I should say, not a lot of magicians. There's like three people who I consult for. And, um, you know, it's a really great time, great experience getting to work with them. And then I also do my own shows, and then I make these videos on YouTube. So all of this is able to cultivate a, uh, a living, thankfully, and I'm very fortunate for that. Uh, I just now became uh, a roster, gained roster on a college agency, and that has me even more ecstatic because the college market is something I've been doing independently for a while, and I would do maybe five, four to five colleges a year, it's nothing crazy, um, but now that I have representation and I'm going to be diving in a lot more seriously into it, 
I'm really excited for what the future holds. So there you have it everyone. That is my story so far about how I got started in magic and basically how I created a career out of performing or doing anything within the magic industry. I hope that inspired some of you to go out there and perform and book your first gig. I'm gonna have a series on this channel that I've already started uh, scripting about, you know, the steps to basically get started in making a career or a, you know, making a, a living off of magic, even if it's as like your first summer job. There are lots of really creative ways you can get started, so stick around for that. Also, the deck giveaways are still going on. We've got the Crimson deck by Dan Sperry and the Ace Fulton deck by Ace Fulton. I'll put all the details of how to win these in the description box below. If this is your first time watching, welcome. My name is Thomas Hayden and I make videos twice a week about magic and minimalism. My videos go up every Monday and Wednesday. So if you've been enjoying the twice weekly content, please give this video a thumbs up as it really does help me out. If you didn't enjoy this video, the other button works too. It's okay. And if you're new and you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe as I do post bi-weekly and I would love for you to continue on this journey with me. I also give away a rare deck of designer playing cards at the end of every one of my videos. It's part of my minimalism journey to give away one deck every single video. So be sure to stick around for all of that. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Thomas Hayden, and as always, remain magical.